Welcome to this video on levels of spinal cord injury. In this video, we'll look at the spinal cord and why at different levels, if there is injury, why we see different symptoms. Firstly, let's make sense of this image. Up the top, we have the brain, and this color-coded picture is essentially illustrating the spinal cord. For today, I want you to think of it like an elevator. So this elevator is going up and down 31 different floors of a building. Up the top, we have the penthouse, which is the brain, and these are all the levels as we move down. Now, what we're gonna do is break the spinal cord into color-coded into its different regions. So at the top, closest to the brain, we have the cervical region, and here we have eight nerves coming out which supply the area of the body around the neck region. So this is, has eight levels, so we call it C1 to C8, cervical one to cervical eight. Eight spinal nerves coming out and in at this region. The next level we have 12 thoracic, so we call this T1 to T12. Next we have the lumbar region, which is L1 to L5, so there's five levels here. And then finally we finish off with the sacral, and there's five of those, so we call it S1 to S5. Today I've left out the coccygeal, which also has one, but essentially this gives you the 31 levels of the spinal cord. Now just for a brief overview of each part, the cervical region is gonna supply and provide sensations to the neck, the shoulders and the upper arm. The thoracic is going to supply motor movement as well as sensory to the thorax and abdomen. The lumbar is the lower back, the hip and the legs. The sacrum is the lower part of the legs and then finally the pelvis which is going to be for bowel and bladder and sexual function. So any one of these regions that have an injury is going to essentially impact those functions that we just mentioned. Before I get on to the levels of injury, I just wanna make clear that no injury is the same. So even though it might occur at the same level, spinal cord injury can be at different degrees of severity. So some can be complete, some can be uh, partial, some can be at one side, can, some can be centrally. So they're never gonna be completely the same, at least in their symptoms. Now let's start with the cervical region. So this is essentially going to be impact in the neck going down to the limbs. But one of the first things I want to point out is the nerves that are controlling the breathing muscle. So approximately C3 to C5 is going to send a nerve out that goes to the diaphragm, which is a breathing muscle. So any injury above C3 is going to cause impairment to this muscle, which means the person won't be able to use their diaphragm, therefore they can't breathe on their own and they will need a ventilator. By and large, an injury to the cervical region is going to impact everything below it. So it's going to impact the arms and the legs. So usually this is referred to as quadriplegia or tetraplegia. As we start to move down the cord of the cervical region, we start to see the outflow region to the limbs, and this is predominantly C5 to T1. So those regions are sending nerves in and out to the arms. So the further the injury is down from C5 down to towards T1, there's gonna be a greater degree of sensation and motor control of the arms until we get to T1, which basically would mean that uh, an injury at T1 level, you would have um, control to the neck, the shoulder and the arms anything below that will be um, impacted. Now, injuries of the thoracic region is gonna have a impact in the thorax and the abdomen, particularly the muscles for balance and posture. So there will be challenges with posture and proprioception, which means knowing where the, the, the trunk and the body is in space. Another function of the thoracic region is a part of the nervous system we call the autonomic nervous system or the sympathetic nervous system, which controls blood pressure, heart rate, sweating, etc. So if there is an injury about T5 and above, this will impact this system and therefore there can be a syndrome known as autonomic dysreflexia, which impacts blood pressure, heart rate, sweating, headaches, etc. 
As we start to move to the lumbar region, we will see that the thoracic and cervical region is intact, but will have dysfunction in the lumbar and sacral regions. So specifically in the lumbar, this is going to impact the muscles around the hips, the muscles going down to the thigh, and the muscles in the lower length. So this is going to impact walking. As we move into injuries of the sacral region, walking most likely would be okay because the sacral region only impacts the lower leg, but the, the most profound effect is going to be um, control to the bowel, the bladder, and sexual function. So now hopefully you have a better understanding of why when there are spinal cord injury at different levels, we see different types of symptoms.